Welcome to Wednesday, August 17th, 2022, your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the state. Sign up for their daily newsletter, CowboyStateDaily.com. As we head into the middle part of the week, here we are, hump day Wednesday. We've got really nice August weather coming. For the most part, temperatures aren't going to deviate very far from the 30-year averages. We're going to see the monsoonal areas get suppressed down into Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, parts of central and southern Utah, Arizona. Those areas will see the shower and thunderstorm activity cross the region to the south. Most of the central and northern Rockies will have dry, stable air. This is going to lead to just a few isolated showers and thunderstorms over the northern Rockies. That's it. On the plains, very nice weather. Temperatures are going to be quite comfortable in the coming days. Kind of Goldilocks. Yeah, it'll be warm, but not too hot. Somewhere in between, the nights are getting cooler as well. Now, better rain chances for parts of Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, into western Montana later this weekend and into parts of next week. We're going to see a little bit of a resurgence of monsoonal moisture, but it's going to really want to be west of the divide through most of the weekend. But east of the divide, it'll be next week when the better chances of showers and thunderstorms will move in, along with cooler temperatures. It's a late summer pattern developing. Uh, I think the, the hottest days of summer for most of the lower 48 are done. Yes, there'll be islands of heat. But what we saw in late June, July, and early August, especially in the southern parts of the United States and the central plains, we're not going to see the heat anything like that. In fact, on the contrary, I'll show you here in a minute, there's going to be some big precipitation for parts of the southern plains, including Texas, as we get into the next couple of weeks. There's also going to be a big ramp up of tropical storm and hurricane activity in the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic by the end of this month. It has been an incredibly quiet hurricane season so far, even in the Pacific, the Western Pacific for two years in a row at near historical minimums of hurricane activity. But we've just been waiting for the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico to kind of get going. And we do think it will as we get to the end of the month. And you'll be hearing about that on the news. Today's satellite photos showing more orange than gray. So you can see that the monsoonal moisture plume is definitely weaker, breaking up a little bit, uh, although it's still really sticking around these southern areas. And this is where the thunderstorm activity is going to be here over the next few days. Taking a look at the last two weeks, I wanted to show you this because some folks have been really happy with the rain. Some people have been really unhappy because in these monsoon moisture patterns, you get these islands of heavy rain significant rains. Then you have these islands of dryness where the rain just doesn't get into your area. And this is typical of a monsoon. It just is not going to get everybody with the same results. So it can be really frustrating when your lawn is drying up and you see the storms go north, south, east, and west of you, and you don't get anything. But over the last 14 days, you can see a, a good portion of Wyoming, southern Montana, the northern Panhandle, Nebraska, western South Dakota, Colorado, back into Utah, eastern Idaho. There are some lots of red areas. One, two, three inches of rain in some areas. Of course, there were some areas that got more than they needed. But you can see we've got these islands where, well, the rainfall just was not there as much. And you just get into these situations where it gets really frustrating for those areas. So there are winners and losers in a monsoon. That is always the case. And if you look at the precipitation anomaly compared to the two week average that normally falls during that time frame, you can see the green and the blue areas, the brown and the white areas showing where the precipitation wasn't nearly as extensive. And if you look at Colorado, it was kind of the same thing, really focused on the north central mountains in the front range of Colorado, while there are islands of brown and parts of the western slope and the far eastern plains over the last couple of weeks. This is how the monsoon goes. It really depends on luck and chance of where these storms tend to go. As we head on into the next few days, the pattern will evolve with high pressure stretching to the northwest. This is going to bring heat to the interior northwest, the Pacific northwest, places like Boise, Seattle, and Portland going to be really, really warm with a trough of low pressure bringing cooler conditions to the Great Lakes and the east. 
And then you can see up in these northern latitudes here, there's just a lot more going on. Now, this is by Saturday afternoon. The high pressure gets squeezed a little bit. And what we're going to see is the weakening of the high. This is also this trough coming into the Corn Belt will bring cooler air into the region as well. And this axis of moisture, see this L here? This is part of that tropical disturbance that was here a day or two ago as it's going to work its way up. So this will bring rain back into the Great Basin and areas of west of the divide this weekend. And here you can see that moisture plume. So look at the contrast. Along and west of the divide, there's moisture. Then there's another axis of dryness just along and east of the divide into the plains area. So as we get into the weekend, it's really going to be the monsoon for west of the Continental Divide. This axis of moisture does, though, come into the early parts of next week. So east of the divide is when the thunderstorm and showers get going. Really won't be until probably Sunday and into the middle parts of next week. As you can see, this is by next Wednesday. High pressure is starting to retreat westward into the Pacific. This is important, as we have talked about in terms of the long range forecast. We have a weak trough coming out of Canada that's gonna swing on through. See this low right here? It's kind of another tropical disturbance coming up into the Southern Plains. And most of the central and eastern United States is under a trough, cooling things off a little bit. So this is a late summer pattern, easing the heat slowly and starting to see more frontal systems come out of the Pacific. This is by next Thursday. We have a deeper axis of moisture draped across the Northern Plains and really look at, look at the West. There's gonna be more moisture, more shower and thunderstorm chances next week. And here's that heavier moisture over Central and Eastern Texas. And look at the precipitation. This is over the next 10 days. So at least initially the precipitation is held up to the South. But this precipitation right here gets started this weekend and into early next week with those frontal systems. And to go further south, we talked about Texas and the Southern Plains. Texas is just going to go into a 180 and part of the Southern Plains, the hot and dry weather that happened in June and May and into early parts of August is going to transition to cooler and very wet conditions down there. That will help some of those drought areas across parts of the Southern Plains. And then going out further, so this is looking at, I cut the date off, unfortunately, but basically this is right around the 27th and the 28th of August. High pressure is forecasted to build into the Gulf of Alaska. That means the Western United States is open to fronts. The door is open. The season is open for cold fronts in this type of pattern. Whether or not it develops, we don't know, but we've seen hints of this and we've shared that with you that at the end of August, early September, there may be one or two strong cold fronts coming into the region. And that really will put the kibosh on any intense summertime heat. Notice an L in the Gulf of Mexico. See this right here in the Atlantic. Oh boy, here we go. Things start to get really rowdy by the end of the month. Look at this. This is the temperature anomaly by August 31st. Look at all that purple and blue coming into Montana, parts of the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, up into Western areas of Canada. We only have a little thin ribbon of heat right here by the end of the month, and that'll be temporary with the rest of the United States and most of North America cooling off. Look what happens out in the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. What I'm showing you is a sea level pressure chart, basically where what the air pressures are doing right now. This will be as of noon today. We got a big high over a good part of the Atlantic. We've got a low up here. This is a pretty nice pattern, but you see these little lows in, in Africa right here. So when you start to see that, and remember the trade winds take these lows west, that's where they go. They kind of go against what you normally think about a west to east flowing pattern. This is the way the Atlantic has looked really all summer. High pressure dominated, very little tropical activity going on. But look what happens in just a couple of weeks. All of those green circles there with all those L's, that is the potential. It's what the model is seeing, the computer model is seeing, the wave train we call it, beginning in Africa and beginning to form these storms. Look at the potential for hurricane activity in the Southeast United States, the Gulf of Mexico, Things are about ready to get really interesting right at the end of August and early September. Not only here in the West, with maybe a transition to more active, colder weather, but out across the tropics of the Southeast United States and the Atlantic. So, if you're a weather geek, there's going to be a lot going on here 
in the next couple of weeks, especially right at the end of the month. We'll see you Thursday. Have a great Wednesday.